See this? So when in my studies and figuring out where the shadow zone is, this whole interface is kind of confusing as to where the layer actually is. Because if you look over here at the data, the data they report when the when the sound starts act officially kicking back. So up here, the speed of sound is increasing, and then from this point on, it's decreasing. That point is minus five seven one feet, but then it actually reports the layer depth at minus six oh six feet. So I'm never sure which one is the correct one. But so that's why the data I'm collecting is kind of rough. It's gonna to have to include a little margin of error. But the data I've collected on the shadow zone so far is quite linear and it correlates pretty well. But all my I've like tested it out like multiple times now and I've never had a layer shallower than like six hundred feet, so I think it depends how deep the water is for the layer depth it gets. I'll have to try it out in more littoral regions, try and get some shallower layers to see if it still holds up the relationship. Hello and goodbye. All right, we're down here. All ahead, two thirds. Hell two I. thirds it up. All right, what's the time right now? It was just four four, so that would be twenty minutes. That would be uh, three point three three nautical miles. Yeah, it's still pretty much the same as I was predicting. We weren't going slow for too long. <laughs> All right, I gotta reset up these tubes. We'll probably be doing our attack with starboard tubes. Let's get CR22 on them bad boys. Those RTEs are garbage. No active for you, no active for you. I want passive. Oh, it messes up all the speeds. That's fine. I might as well just leave it on auto crew at this point. I just gotta remember to change it back to passive. Gotta change it back to passive. Okay. Yes, frags. Our last time we had two engagements with the Kirov. The first one, I missed him. In the new update, the RA 1.44, they're surface ships are very good at evading active torpedoes at this point at least this guy is maybe smaller ones or not but the passes work well so he duped the actives and then he got me with a freaking standoff tour right on my noodle and then the second engagement i shot on him but i dog legged him so i sent him like up this way and then at him for example and then uh at that point once they gotten close enough i came back above the layer to check on his position but I had torpedo tube doors open and I was wounded. So that I think the combination of that let him hear me, but then he like bullseyed my ass, but I sunk, I sunk him as well, so it was a draw. It was a draw last time, but I guess for me technically a loss, not supposed to die. <laughs> but strategically, I guess it would be a draw. Is a seal worth a care off? Probably not. Probably not. No, I'm gonna go ahead and say it is not. A seal is worth more than a care off. Uh, I guess it depends. Kirov carries a bunch of supersonic cruise missiles, but they are older, older supersonic cruise missiles. Kirov's like one of those things that's so big and like valuable, you almost wouldn't want to risk it for fear of it being sunk and the damage to morale that would take place and that kind of stuff. <laughs> Oh, did the course get changed on him last time? When I was making the little marks for where he was going to be, I wasn't being uber precise with the course. just kind of eyeballing it. And LA is worth a cure off. Yeah. I guess so. It's always hard to say. <laughs> Something's worth something. But yeah, I guess I would say at this point in time, yeah, in LA... There, uh, the freaking Cheyenne ca was commissioned over 20 years ago, which is crazy to think about. It's old tech. Old tech. Yes, yeah, spectral. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to make a video about the layer. I've made a video about the different layer types, but the new video is uh, it's about where the shadow zone is. And right now, I guess I've just been collecting data for surface duct layer type, which is what we have in this mission. There's also Convergence Zone 1, which uh, 
when you get beneath the layer, this comes down and then curves out. And uh, I'll have to do data collection for that one as well. But that one should be the same idea because it doesn't start curving back until really deep, the sound sound speed there. But yeah, so I'm working on a correlation for it. But basically at this point, you want to be as close to the layer under the layer that you can be because the deeper you go, the further back the shadow zone comes. And that's because the sound the sound does bend down here, but it eventually I'm trying to draw this out. But like the further the deeper you go, you can come out of the shadow zone. So you want to be as close to the layer as possible, like within twenty, twenty or forty feet. Seven to fifteen ten to fit ten to twenty meters, something like that, five to twenty meters. You want to be you want to hug that layer when you're underneath of it if you're going against the surface ship if you're going against the sub that just introduces a whole other variable which is the other sub's depth but it's easier to figure out against a it's more of a surface ship thing but generally for like where we're at the shadow zone you'd expect it to be at about about four miles is the closest you could get while still being under the layer Yeah, if you have not seen my um, layers video, Spectral, where I explain the three different layers, it's called, uh, the video is called Sound Speed Profile. You can probably just search that on YouTube, even without FPS Chesley, and it'll show up. All right, let's get above the layer, and let's start the music. We're going to go one third. One third, five, five my. two, eight feet, die by. I just want to verify he's where he is, and then we'll come back beneath the layer and launch our torps. Okay, yeah, so he's possibly a little further away than I want him to be. But that's fine. I think shooting from this range at him could be fine. Let's go ahead and give him the range circle for the shadow zone of about 3.9 miles. So once the torps get within that, no matter at which point beneath the layer they are, this is the point at which the layer effectively doesn't exist anymore. So at that point, he'll be able to hear the torps. But I'll be launching the torps about 20 or 30 feet below the layer, really up in there, really hugging the layer. It's tricky to collect the data on this kind of stuff empirically. I made a spreadsheet to try and calculate where the layer, where the shadow zones should be based on like this stuff. It doesn't really work. It doesn't really match what's in the game. But... It kind of it gives results that you would kind of expect, but it doesn't really work. It doesn't match to what you see in the game, so I don't know where the disconnect on that is, but it's just easier to collect it empirically, which means testing it instead of deriving a mathematical relation for it. Testing and collecting data. Oh, I'm definitely going to dog lag them, of course, but I'm going to stay beneath the layer until I'm almost sure he's running and if I come back above the layer I'll be I'm gonna be super quiet I'm gonna be like three knots but I may not come back above the layer I may stay beneath the layer and just let the torps sort it out because I want to stay hidden from this dude all right we're up here let's get this time lapse going until my toad comes back up it's gonna take a little bit Ooh, da, ooh, ooh, getting getting whiffs, getting whiffs of W A A there. I don't know what it's W A A in. Well, I guess the sphere can be W A A in his butt. Oh my God, hello. All right, are you still doing your ten knots? Yes, you are. W A A is that being reliable? It's bouncing around. It's around seventeen thousand, so around eight and a half miles. Which is pretty much what I'm seeing, so this solution is probably pretty good. Tracker review. What do we got? I'm at 6-6. Six, six. That's just about right on the money there. So, that is what he's doing. Uh, we could probably refine this a little bit. What is up with that middle data? That middle data looks a little wonky.
That could be crap data. I think that's from the last time I peeped above the layer. But the solution's pretty good. We'll go with that. Oh, that just pushed them a little further away. Okay, that's fine. Um, that is fine. The WAA is not technically to be trusted above 15,000 yards, but I'm just trying to get a rough average for it. It's around 17,000. Around 17,000 yards. Holding pretty constant on the course there. Uh, let's get rid of that hour. Okay. So yeah, we can go ahead and get back down and shoot at his butt. But we might as well try and firm this up a little bit while we're here. I guess if we're dog-legging him, then my solution doesn't actually really need to be that great. Because I'm going to have to be manually controlling them anyway. I guess after I shoot him, I can, uh, you know, go 15 knots and go this way under the layer. Try and open it up from him a little bit. We can do that. He's moving right to left slowly but surely, which is expected behavior. Let's try and get a few more LOBs and verify what he's doing. Going five knots, no way he can hear us. It's a strong three signals right there. Three signals, three lines, three frequency lines. Oh, come on, that SNR is higher than that. Why is it giving me zero for the signal to noise ratio? That is weird. I have a tracker on this guy. Oh, there you go. Yeah, signal to noise of six. Okay, I think I lost the tracker on them at some point, but we're good now. Yeah, we're not necessarily going to turn to refine this. I guess we could turn to refine it. We could come back this way. No, last time it took him three Mark 48s to sink him, so I'm launching three. The last volley from last time I launched three, and one of them malfunctioned, so maybe I should launch four. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that's a lot of fish. Okay. Excuse me. How's this solution looking? That's fine. We'll just go ahead and take this if this is good. Eh. Eh. Ooh. Ah. What is that range to target? 16,000 yards. Let's switch it back real quick. Let's switch it back. Come right to course one, two, three. Hell my. Switch it back. I just want to really firm up the solution. Why not? We got some time. Really want to firm it up. Fishing boat. Did it put it back? Why does it keep putting it as a fishing boat? You are a goddamn cure off. Accept your fate. You are a cure off. <laughs> yeah, the sonar read I wasn't from the fish would be nice. But they didn't include it in the game. Die, animal boy. Quick decision. Whoa. Steady on course. One, two, three. All right, Toad. Straighten out. Give me some data. We're good. We are good at this point. He will not hear us at five knots at this range. And then when, we'll, when we're ready to fire, we'll swing back around this way. We'll probably run to this direction. No. Maybe we'll run about the same bearing we shoot from. We'll shoot about west-northwest. Okay. Just want to get some data on this bearing here. Some data. Verify his solution tracker review. Got some good bearing rate on him now, 13,000. Okay, now the WA is pretty accurate. Yeah, look at that. That's pretty in there. 13,000 yards. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. Okay. I don't know if we're getting good data on this on this yet. Yeah, we should be. Let's give it a few more minutes. Keeps putting two trackers on him. Not sure why. Tracker R and Tracker Q.
Okay, the WA is saying that, but the TMA is saying this. We'll do that. That's fine. Not much refinement. Uh, maybe a slightly different course. I sometimes get this weird behavior where, like, the two dots have the same course, but they're kind of offset. But we'll go with that. Alrighty, let's turn around and get this party started. Let's come to this direction here. Come right to course two, eight, five. Oh, Hell my. Tuck in right beneath the layer. This should be good. Eight six feet. two eight. Bye bye. Let's do six three five. Make my depth six three five feet. Die by. And we'll do two torps. Or four torps, excuse me. Four torps. Don't care about the auto cruise. 42 knots. Top speed plus two knots. Uh, we might as well just put them on snapshot, honestly. I'm going to be dog-legging them anyway. And we'll snapshot them due north. I wish you could set up the fancy stuff with the harpoon. You could set up like a waypoint and then enable here kind of thing. But it's fine. And then this stuff. 9,000 yards. No, we don't want that to be 9,000. We'll set that to 14,000-ish in case I have to forget about them. It should be sufficient. But hopefully I don't have to forget about them because if I don't turn them, then they're useless. All right. Okay, well, if I'm dog-legging them this direction, should I run this way or that way? As long as I dog-leg them this way, well, this is the shadow zone point for them. I should probably dog-leg them northwest. Let's do 330. North northwest. Did the US have sixty five seventy six analogs? No. Um Yeah, the US has not had torps that big. At least since the start of the Cold War, maybe before they did. The tor the Seawolf has six hundred and fifty millimeter tubes. Uh, but it still launches Mark 48s, which are 533, or excuse me, 65 centimeter tubes. But it uses Mark 48s, which are 53 centimeter torpedoes. Apparently, some people on Cold Waters were, or on on sub sim in the Cold Waters forum, were saying it was for them to swim out. But apparently, the Mark 48 cannot swim out. The engine only starts if it gets a certain G shock from being launched out with compressed air which was the implication I don't think the guy said that much but that's obviously the implication of what he was saying all right let's get this toad back retrieve in retrieve the starboard toad array hell my eh, we'll run this way we'll run this way try and be easy on these wires <laughs> But no, ever since the Mark 48 came out, that's been the U.S. United States submarine uh, jack of all trades torpedo. Feels like the Russians have a bajillion different kinds of torpedoes, but the U.S. just, in terms of submarines, that's the only torpedo that U.S. submarines launched with the Mark 48. There are Mark 50s and Mark 54s, but those are airdrop slash ship launch torpedoes. I, I would not say the Mark 48 is a master of none. <laughs> I would not say that. <clears throat> I'm 
pretty sure the general consensus is that the Mark 48 is the best torpedo in the world. Stream the port towed array, hell my. Alright, are we ready to get that get this freaking party started here? I'm just gonna open one of these doors and make sure that we have starter tubes two, here. Eight, five. Where's our course like this? Okay. Yeah, we'll launch them three three zero. I can't tell the light's not over here, but tube one doesn't open over here, so yeah, okay, and there's starboard tubes. All right, I'm going to go to the bathroom, good to empty the bladder before a fight, and then we'll get this show on the road here. <laughs> Leave the door open for three seconds and cats invade. Okay. Ugh. Oh, the lamp. I think the lamp got trashed. Ooh. Chat has been active. Yeah, the Mark 48 is good. The, U the UGST, I think, is the closest thing to a Mark 48, which is a post-Cold War torpedo for the Russians. Yeah, max range anyway is just... Uh, that only is applicable to a stationary target. All right. Let's freaking do it. Okay, Jenny. Let's launch these torps. Uh, they're all, let's just all verify that they're set properly. Depth. That is not the depth I want them to run at. Is that the, that's the enable depth. That is fine. Speeds are all good. All right, let's start the music. Launch two one, aye sir. Con sonar, unit Launch is running Launch two normally. three, aye sir. All ahead two thirds, hell am I. Launch two five, aye sir. Con sonar, unit is running normally. Launch tube seven. And number Aye, four. Con sonar. Unit is running normally. Four torps away. Con sonar. Unit is running normally. All right, let's go ahead and run off to this direction here. Come left to course two, five. All ahead, standard. Hell my. Let's go for that. Let's go for that Yang 18 knots, 17 knots. Make turns for 17 knots. Maneuvering, I. <laughs> I hear torpedo launches. Yes. It's a great sound. <laughs> yeah, torpedo launches. No, I should I should save this for if I sink the guy. Okay, so we'll dogleg him. Once they're right in front of him, we'll turn him back Steady on. Steady on have course. Some torps. Two, Head five, straight for eight. Him. That closure speed, though. Okay. Oh my gosh, Retrieve I don't want that much towed out. Hell my. Maybe I should not be seeing anything except my torps. What is that? Oh my god, I can see the cure off. That's not good. Why can I see the cure off? I don't know why I can see the cure off. Is he burning through the layer? I'm not sure. All right, well let's uh, let's not take any chances then. All ahead, standard. All ahead, standard. Hell my. All ahead, full. Hell my. All 
Oh, no, I cannot see him on the toad anymore. That was weird. Was I de did I deploy my toad while I was still above the layer? Maybe. I don't know. Oh, well, maybe I can't see him anymore because I'm going such a speed at the... The, the TB-16 starts to wash out at 18 knots. It's ping. He's not pinging. He is set to MCON. Oh, that's... God Stream damn it. Port, toad array, hell mine. God damn it. This crap. Micromanaging. Well, it'll come out quick. I'm going 20 knots. <clears throat> Surprised I wasn't getting any recommend lowering all mass and antennas going on there. Because if you're close to the speed limit and you're reeling it back in, you'll be hitting the speed limit because the uh, effective flow rate over it will be like, you know, 23 knots or something. Okay, we're only going to get so much acuity out of this thing, which is not a lot. Stream the port toad array, hell my. That's very weird. I was seeing them there on the narrowband for a little bit. That was very odd. I was hoping, hoping my toad was still above the layer or something. I don't know. This is bugging up, so I can't even tell. It's basically washed out. I sh feel like I should be able to see my torps on this right now, but eh, they're very slightly showing up. But I just want to boogie on out of here, just in case somehow the shadow zone wasn't working. But I'm going to trust it. I'm going to believe he has not heard me or any of this yet. I'm going to trust my datas. Trust my datas. My assumptions are I'm underneath the layer and that my math is correct and his, and his shadow zone is at that point and that my toad was above the layer at launch, so I still was hearing the cure off. What's up, Rupert? Oh, I'm getting hungry. I'm getting hungry. I had a lot of food these past few days. These past few weeks, I've had a lot of food. Ugh. Because of unforeseen circumstances. All right, these guys could now head due north if I wanted them to. Oh, their depth is 614 feet. That is shot. Well, I guess. Oh, let's see. Let's. Yeah, let's see for the different torps if their depths. Yeah, their depths are different. That's cool. Okay, you would expect that because the tubes are at different depths on the, on the hull. Tube one is 20 feet away from my keel. 20 feet above my keel. That's crazy. <laughs> Probably pop a torp above me. Part of me is feeling like I should just run this way because we the opening speed would be 30 knots. Let's do it. Well, I'm trying to be kind to my to my wires <laughs> is what I'm doing. All right, let's have you guys come to north. Uh, I feel like if he was going to launch any standoffs, they would have splashed by now. I'm going to stay beneath the layer for this one. I'm not going to go above the layer until these torps get very close. And I'm almost convinced that he is running. We'll come above the layer at like five or three knots or something like that. We'll try and be quiet. You know, I guess if a torpedo is not in the water, I should actually be running directly perpendicular to him. Just Come open left this to up. course two, two. Because the four, way I'm running right now I. is for torpedo evasion, straight running torpedo evasion. But we just want to clear that datum, so let's run perpendicular, ish. The torpedo, the wires in this game are like indestructible, so I'm not worried about it too much. If those wires snapped, I'd be furious. I'd just lose all this progress. I guess we could turn them in now. I mean, that's definitely a sufficient dog leg. That's like plus Steady 60 degrees course. from where two, I launched him two, from. Four. Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. Let's turn him in. Okay. 
guess we could have them come in from slightly different bearings. That'll be kind of fun because they're kind of staggered this direction. When you turn them in, they'll be like next to each other. <laughs> oh, they probably shouldn't be 90 exactly. Let's do uh, 80. And they're kind of close together. <laughs> that should be fine, though. That's never been a concern for me with a torpedo blowing up other torpedoes. All right, they'll be coming through that shadow zone soon. They'll be coming through that shadow zone soon. <laughs> and that Karoff will hear my torps, and he'll start running. They'll be coming through that shadow zone soon. Yes, the Kirov has very much has anti-sub missiles that are usable in game. He will own my butt with stallions. So we're just trying to clear that datum. Just opening up that distance boogie. In. Oh man, viewers close to 30. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello. Can I see all the other torch? No. It's too dark. Oh, well, there's some. This is all the lighting. And they're at such a depth that they're not cavitating, too, which is nice. But if you're trying to hug them to the lair, that's not always feasible that they won't be cavitating. Can't see more than just the one torp in front of them. Where's that other torp? Oh, that's the first torp. Two and three are pretty close. Can't see three from two. All right, they're now burst through the shadow zone. He should probably be hearing them now. Yeah, he has, there's Silex, I don't know that Silex is, I don't think they're in Dangerous Waters, I don't think Silexes were in use anymore by 2005. Now I want to look that up. Maybe they are still in use, I don't know. But the Kirov only has, uh, Kirov only has the Stallions. Is a Russian family of anti-submarine missiles, Okay. No, the, miss the missile has been in operational service since 1968, but is no longer in production. Okay. SSN-15 Starfish. But yeah, the Kirov... Oh, no, the Kirov does have them. Okay, I don't think they're in... I don't think Dangerous Waters models Silex, though. I've never seen one in-game. What is Silex? SSN-14? Maybe they don't model it the same look as uh, Cold Waters. But uh, for all I know, RA has put them in. I don't know. Uh, no, I want missiles. No, I want... Uh, it should be in here. Yeah, it should be in here. SSM-14 Silex. Oh, they do have a Silex. Okay. I don't think I've ever seen it. Well, it's not like Cold Waters where you do see it. Maybe it does. Okay, it looks like it's only on the Oodaloy in game. Platform reference. Armament. Shipwreck. RBU. Stallions. Yeah, it just has stallions in the game. But it's not like stallions are any less dangerous since I would be more afraid of stallions. But yeah, the Kirov in Dangerous Waters only has stallions. Udaloy spam them. <laughs> I'm sure they do. And one of the stock missions, the stock game. Hmm. I feel like the ASW rockets aren't as big in the stock game. But who knows? Alrighty. I guess when we wanted to turn these bad boys on soon. Oh, they just turned on automatically. That's fine. Let them do their thing. Do their thing with the chicken wang. So that screaming climb to run depth means they did not acquire. If they acquired, I think they would have come up at a more shallow angle. But who knows? But yeah, they're going. Okay. Let us come this way. Come left to course one, zero, six. Hell my. 
these wires should be toast, but DW has the De Uba wire. I guess I could have turned around the other way. It's fine. The White Sea mission? Oh, that one. Yeah, I've never had them shoot Oodaloids against me in that mission. I can't remember the last time I played that mission. I think I did it for my, my, my channel at some point. I don't remember how it turned out. Oh, let's get some of that history going on. Okay, they're maneuvering. Looks like he's running. Oh, that would be that would be funny if he was running this direction. Let's go to two thirds. All ahead, two thirds. Hell am I? Oh, these aren't waycombers. These are just passive torps. Steady on course. Wait, One, why are they going zero, fifty knots? Six. Isn't that too fast for a passive torp? They were set to passive, right? Oh no. No, don't tell me they were set to active. Oh, son of a gun. I'd set them to passive. I don't know if that means that it's just like it was set to active or that it's just not letting me like change it per se. Uh, they were set to passive, weren't they? I'm pretty sure they were. But they're going 50 knots. When it's passive, they go to 45 knots. I think they might be active. All, right, let's go All ahead, on, one, one third. third. Hell am I. Uh, part of me just does not want to risk coming above the layer. I think I'm just going to leave it. But it looks like he's running at this point. They're maneuvering. Con sonar. Torpedo in the water. Bearing. Zero, two, three. Con sonar. I have a new contact. Bearing. Zero, two, zero, three. Zero, two, two. Designated Sierra. Two, three. 2650. I'm not above the layer. If he can hear me, I don't know what's going on with that. 2650. Oh, what am I doing? I want... Scroll up. APR2, APR3. What the heck is up with this crap? It's for Come right to course in. 1, 8, 7. Helm Retrieve the port towed array. Helm I. Con sonar. Torpedo in the water. Bearing two, two, four. Con sonar. Lost the wire. Closed. Tube one. Con sonar. Lost the wire. Tube five. I guess con we're getting sonar. Hits. Lost the wire. Tube three. Oh, no, no, no. Con I just sonar. The doors. I have a new contact. <laughs> Bearing. No, two, not that two, deep. There's five. ground down Designated there. Designated Sierra. Two, four. Make my All depth. ahead, standard. One, zero, I. three, five feet. Dive I. Launch countermeasures. I sir. Sure. Launch countermeasures. Aye, sir. Maybe that was just a dumb launch by him. I don't know. He could have just launched him that direction there. Because I, I was not seeing them on the sonar. So they could be pretty far away. I'm just being precautionary here. But they don't seem to be getting spoofed by anything. I still don't know if they were set to passive or active or not. I don't think the stallions were near me. I think the stallions are right here. Is that too close, though? I don't know. I did not see them on sonar at all. There's no sign of a, of a stallion on there. No sign whatsoever. But we'll just be safe and get boogieing. All ahead full. Hell my... Steady on course. One, eight, The torpedoes seven. are out of my hands. Oh, there's one that way. Come, Come left way. to course. One, one zero, there. seven. Hell Dude, mine. this makes no sense. How is this guy hearing me? I'm beneath the layer. I dog like the torps. It's probably just some glitch with how DW works. But that torp is not near me, though. He's circling somewhere over there. Not showing up on the active intercept. What's up with that? Oh, there you go. That was odd. No, he's too far away. I mean, I guess he could potentially have his toad beneath a layer, but it's like, why wait until 
this point. Ooh. Consona. Steady on Explosion. course. One, zero, seven. And that seven. noise is gnarly, dude. <laughs> I don't know where that first tour was when it blew up. Consonar. I have a new contact. Bearing. Zero, zero, three. Designated Sierra. Two, five. Oh, for fuck's sake. Dude, I'm getting sick of this crap. What is going on? There is no reason he should have known where I was. If he knew where I was, why would he wait until the torpedoes go active to launch stallions at me? Like, why wouldn't he launch them right away? I don't know, man. <clears throat> I think I got a second hit. This guy's going 40 knots. That's interesting. They don't normally lose speed in turns, do they? This one's going 42. <clears throat> Ugh. Was that guy even pinging me? I don't even know where that torp came from. 12 out of 10 realism. <laughs> It takes so long to look at the replay, too. It's such a long replay at this point. <laughs> I think these guys are just going off in random directions now. That is weird that that turned into a moat. Yeah, I don't know. Con sonar. Loud explosion on the bearing of Sierra. Two, two. That could be it. I think I've sunk him now at this point. Unless I hit a countermeasure. Yeah, I wasn't hearing any pings or whatever. I think I just sunk the gear off, though. Pretty sure I just sunk him. Floating wire damage, 12 minutes, 153. Uh, no, I don't show dead platforms. But we got three three hits or three torpedoes have disappeared at least I don't think torpedoes hit countermeasures anymore since one RA update or something She'll be coming round the mountain when she comes. She'll be coming round the mountain when she comes. Active intercept damage, but you can still hear pings, not hearing any. Hulse on our damage, 15 minutes. All ahead, two thirds. Hell am I. Just gonna wait for the floating wire to get repaired. Ugh, this is ridiculous. I'm beneath the layer, far as hell away. Dog like the torps. It's just like the it has to be some kind of bug or something, because like why wait until the torps have gone that far to start launching? And if you because if you wait till that point, that either means you heard the torps here, so you should be launching them at them there. But if you already heard me from the beginning, why wait till then to launch at me? <clears throat> and that guy's just going.
Make my depth six, three, five feet. That is possible, bye but bye. that would be such a freaking ridiculous shot, <laughs> I feel like. <laughs> That's just me, though. Unless, it, like, if it wasn't a nuclear depth bomb. <laughs> that bastard. Just waiting for this wire to get repaired. Okay. Countermeasure tubes, compressed air propellers. Po port toad array repaired. Propellers repaired. Stream the port toad array. Helm. Stream the port toad array. Helm I. All ahead one third. Helm I. Make turns for two knots. Maneuvering I. Oh, I forgot to look at that. It's fine. We sunk that Akula. The last save was right after I sunk the Akula. I forgot to verify that with radio, but I should be verifying that shortly here. Manatorp's still going. He is at a slow speed. How far is that torp going? Five miles. Yeah, 20. Probably got another f four miles or so in him because he's going at a slower speed. Okay, I'm going to drop that solution because it's no longer valid. But I'm assuming our boy is dead. Uh, do I need to launch from further away against this damn Kirov? I don't know what to do. I wish the replay was a little more power, like a little more powerful. Is that the right word I want? Yeah. So you could be like, you can get triggers for like, oh, this guy just had to do that. Well, there's like a debugger mode, but I don't know if I feel like playing this on debugger mode. Con radio, new message traffic received. Oh, there you go. We did get the gear off. Okay. Well, I guess that's better progress than last time. <laughs> well, might as well give it a save. Save as 12. Kirov sunk, but bastard hit me. So then we got op area 4. That could be tricky. Ugh! Is there no way to hit this dude without getting shot by some miraculous shot? It's freaking buggy ass AI. I feel like these RA guys keep tweaking and tweaking shit, but I feel like they're just more and more breaking the game. I don't know. Yeah, I'll look at the replay. It's so long at this point, it takes forever to record, but that's fine. Yeah, I guess I should upload it so you guys can see it too. So yeah, I'll record the replay. Okay. Very well. Yeah, we need a new DW. <laughs> Game is reaching its limits. Not to belittle what the RA guys have done, but sometimes... Make turns for five knots. Too many cooks in the eye. kitchen. I don't know if that's really an apt analogy, but it's kind of along the lines of what I'm thinking. I mean, if a Seawolf can't take on a Kirov, it's kind of like, come on, what can then? I guess launch further away. How, when did I, what did I launch from? I don't know what distance I launched from. But if you launch further away, like it's like only the most elite torpedoes can make that distance. So it's like, if he hasn't launched on me yet, should I then keep quiet? I don't know. Uh, well, if you saw the last replay video, there wasn't any. I didn't see any air assets in that, but who knows? There could be one somewhere. And the link is bugged for sure. The link is completely broken for the AI in this game. 
But all right, yeah, I'll stop there then. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. We will uh, try and get this. If I can't get him in the next one because of this damage, I may come back and just, you know, cheat to sink this care off good without any damage and then go after the dude in Abera for where I'm molested. But we'll see how that... We'll, we'll try for it at this rate. We'll see what happens. Because, I mean... If it's a sub there, whatever he shoots me with will be a one-shot kill regardless, but I'm probably making more noise at this point. But yeah, I'll see you guys later, so have a good one. As always, good hunting.